Namaskar my dear students. Today in the quick review section, we will be discussing a very important topic that is resin bonded bridges. They are also called as conservative bridges. It is an important short note in the theory exam and it is often asked in the viva. Many MCQs are framed from this topic. So we will discuss them one by one. Let's begin. First of all, what is a fixed dental prosthesis? Fixed dental prosthesis are used to replace the missing or the damaged teeth. Why they are called as fixed? Because they cannot be removed by the patient. If we talk about the conventional or the traditional fixed dental prosthesis, there are mainly three parts. First is the retainer. Retainer is the crown which will be seated onto the abutment. Second is the pontic which will replace the missing tooth and connector which will connect the retainer to the pontic. And the abutment teeth we can say we prepare the abutment teeth for placing the fixed dental prosthesis. Now let us compare the conventional bridges with the resin bonded bridges. If we see this picture, we have already seen the parts of the conventional or the traditional bridge. These are the retainers, the pontic and the connectors. They will be seated onto the abutment tooth. They will be cemented or they will be bonded. Now coming to the resin bonded bridges. First we see the metal ring. Okay, this is the metal ring and this is the replacement tooth or the pontic. The retainer is reduced to a metal ring. That means the reduction of the abutment has decreased. Okay, so that is why they are also called as conservative bridges. Second, they are called as resin bonded because the resin cements are used to bond these kind of bridges onto the abutment teeth. Now we come to the definition of a resin bonded bridge. Resin bonded prosthesis or a bridge is a fixed dental prosthesis which is looted to the tooth structure primarily enamel that means the reduction is within the enamel which has been etched to provide mechanical retention for the resin cement. Now we come to the indications of the resin bonded bridges where we will give these type of bridges. First is replacement of one or two missing mandibular interior or one maxillary interior teeth. You know the occlusion has to be considered. There should be no deep bite when we are replacing with the help of resin bonded bridges. Second, the treatment of choice in young and adolescent patients where we cannot do much reduction because of the large pulp chambers and we cannot give the conventional fixed dental processes. Then in single posterior tooth replacement also in some cases we can give resin bonded bridges. Next is in cases where the abutments are without any restorations, okay, restoration free and with significant crown length then only we can plan for resin bonded bridges. Last, it also acts as a splint in periodontally compromised teeth, though not, good, not as good as the traditional FPD. Next, coming to the contraindications of resin bonded bridges. First contraindication is the parafunctional habits. In this, we will not plan for the resin bonded bridges as there are parafunctional forces, okay, that will lead to failure of this kind of bridge. Second, in the long edentulous span cases, we will not go for resin bonded bridges. Third, restored or damaged abutment, okay. So, in this also, uh, resin bonded bridges are not advocated. Compromised enamel as we are uh, this bridge is based on the bonding with the enamel. So in case of enamel hypoplasia, mottling, amelogenesis imperfecta, we will not go for the resin bonded bridges. Significant uh, deep over vertical overlap okay in deep bite cases there also we will not go for the resin bonded bridges. Last is the nickel allergy as we are using the metal. Uh, so we will not go for the resin bonded bridges. Advantages of resin bonded bridges. There are number of advantages of these conservative bridges. First is the minimal removal of the tooth structure. You know the preparation is very minimal. It is within the enamel. 
second minimal potential to the palpal damage or the trauma this is because of the minimal tooth removal third anesthesia is not required because the preparation is confined to the enamel itself supra gingival preparation margins they are mandatory for the resin bonded bridges okay though they are optional for the conventional fpds easy impression making because of the supra gingival margins provisionals are not required in these cases then there is reduced chair side time okay because of the ease in the preparations and the impression making reduced patient's expense and rebonding is possible of the bridges uh, as uh, only when the metal wings they are not distorted they completely adapt to the tooth structure now next are the disadvantages of the resin bonded bridges the first main disadvantage is its uncertain longevity okay because its initial success rate is 95% which drops down to 80 to 85% after 1 to 1 and a half year so the longevity is questionable second the space correction is difficult if there is wider mesiodistal space of a dangerous span it won't be corrected by the resin bonded bridges next the alignment correction is also not possible with these kind of bridges then it is considered irreversible you know though the minimal preparation is done but still enough the structure is removed to consider it as irreversible it is not preparation less now we come to the classification system of the resin bonded bridges there are four main types of resin bonded bridges depending on the uh, metal surface finishing technique which is used the four types are the Rochef Bridges, Maryland Bridge, Cast Mesh Bridge and the Virginia Bridge. So we will discuss them one by one. First are the Rochef Bridges. You know if we talk about the metal surface there were perforations made in the metal wing. So they are the cast perforated resin retained FPDs. The principle behind is entirely the mechanical retention. Rochette in 1973, he used these wing-like retainers with a funnel-shaped perforations as we can see in the picture also to enhance the resin retention. These type of bridges were first used for periodontal splinting. Okay, now if we talk about the limitations of these bridges, mainly the limitations of the perforations that were made, there was weakening of the metal retainers by these perforations. Second, exposure to wear of the resins at the perforation region. Third, there was limited adhesion of the metal provided by the perforations. And last, there was also the plaque accumulations around these perforations. The second resin bonded bridges are the Maryland bridges. You know, in this, instead of perforation, the concept of electrolytic etching was introduced. Thompson and Levaditis at the University of Maryland, that is why it is called as Maryland bridges, they developed the technique for electrolytic etching of nickel chromium and the cobalt chromium alloys. So the metal rings were uh, electro etched, okay, for the retention. Two methods were employed for the electrolytic etching. First method for the non-beryllium containing alloys. In this, they were 3.5% uh, solution of nitric acid at 250 milliamperes current for 5 minutes, which was followed by placing it in 18% hydrochloric acid for 10 minutes in ultrasonic lenses. The method 2 was employed for the beryllium containing alloys. In this, instead of nitric acid, sulfuric acid was used. 10% solution of sulfuric acid at 300 milliamperes of current, followed by placing in the hydrochloric acid. Now coming to the advantages of the Maryland bridges. You know, because of this electrolytic etching, first there was improved retention. Okay, second, the retainers can be thin and they still resist the flexing. There are no perforations now to weaken the metal structure. The oral surface of the cast retainer is highly polished. There is no wear of the resin, no plaque accumulation which was occurring around the perforations in case of the first. Okay, now the looting and the bonding, it is mainly done with the help of the 
dual cure resin cements okay the simplified techniques have been introduced for the chemical etching or the gel etching method has been introduced now now this maryland bridge it comes as a separate short note sometimes in the theory exam now third are the cast mesh bridges from the name itself you see the cast mesh there is use of cast mesh pattern on the internal surface of the retainers which help in the retention how this cast mesh pattern is obtained the nylon mesh is used on the which is adapted on the lingual and the proximal surface of the abutment teeth then this mesh is covered by the wax pattern or the resin casting is done then the under surface of the retainer it becomes a mesh like surface as we can see in the picture this helps in the retention now coming to the limitations of these kind of bridges you know because of this cast mesh it becomes difficult to adapt to the details of the abutment tooth one second because of this uh, thickness of the cast mesh the retentive ability is also compromised now last are the virginia bridges they are mainly fabricated on the basis of lost salt crystal technique okay they were developed at virginia commonwealth university school of dentistry that is why they are called as the virginia bridges now how these bridges were fabricated uh, within the outlines of the retainer you know 150 to 250 micrometer of salt crystals was sprinkled over the surface of the abutment and uh, leaving the borders intact 0.5 mm of border which was without any crystals to make the margin uh, seal okay this was followed by the resin pattern fabrication and after the pattern fabrication these salt crystals they are dissolved from the pattern this create these lost salt crystals they produce roughness on the inner surfaces of the uh, metal wings which helps in the retention so this is these are the virginia bridges application of resin bonded bridges they mainly uh, include three main steps first is the preparation of the abutment that is done by the clinician in the clinic then the design of the restoration this is mainly done in the lab and third part is the bonding again the chair side procedure for the bonding of the bridge preparation of the abutment for the resin bonded bridges we will discuss the preparation sequence the steps one by one the first step is the occlusal marking with the articulating paper the centric occlusal contacts are marked then the occlusal clearance is made with a small wheel diamond point and we remove 0.5 mm of the structure followed by the lingual reduction it is also done with a small wheel diamond point and we get a clearance of 0.5 mm we end this lingual reduction 1.5 to 2 mm from the incisal edge as we can see in the picture then the countersinks are made these are the flat notches on the lingual surface to provide the resistance to the gingival displacement of the bridge it is done with flat end taper diamond points followed by the proximal reduction the facial segment is reduced first which is facial to the facio proximal line angle it gives a facial wrap around effect and it is done with flat end taper diamond point then comes the proximal reduction of the lingual segment which is just lingual to the facial segment done with the same bird that is flat end taper diamond point Now comes the lingual axial reduction which is done with round end tapered diamond point now regarding the margin a light chamfer margin is given which is 1 mm supra gingival you know these points are often asked as multiple choice questions okay coming to the cingulum groove very important cingulum groove is given on the uh, side away from the edentulous side okay it is given on the facial most extension of the lingual reduction why it is given because it gives the resistance form okay it is made with short needle diamond as we can see in the picture then comes the proximal groove proximal groove is given on the opposite side that is on the edentulous side on the saddle area side and it is given between the facial and the lingual planes of proximal reduction 
It is also given with short needle diamond point. So here we see the resin bonded abutment preparation for a maxillary incisor. Okay, now uh, we can see the lingual reduction, the axial reduction, the cingulum groove and the proximal groove with the counter sinks. So that's all for this topic. I'm sure this video will really help you not only to understand the topic but to also perform well in exam. Please like and share the video with your friends and your juniors. You can give your topics in the comment section. I will try to cover them in the next video. Wish you success today and always.